What's going on wine lovers? I'm the wine astronaut and today we're going to explore the universe of orange wine. Eight thousand years ago, a few Georgian winemakers asked themselves a simple question. What if we made white wine like a red wine? You see, to make white wine, you squish a few white grapes, throw out the skins and let the juice ferment by itself. And to make red wine, it's essentially the same, but instead of throwing out the skin straight away, you let them soak for a while so they can release their color and flavor into the wine. So these Georgians said, well, I know we're making white wine, but why don't we leave the skins to soak for a while and see what happens? So they did. They grabbed some white grapes, threw them in a clay pot, squished them, sealed the pot with clay and beeswax, and buried these pots in the soil to keep them cool. But when they finally opened the clay pots, they weren't greeted by wine, they were greeted by liquid sunshine. And today we refer to this alluring nectar as orange wine. Orange wine, amber wine, skin contact wine, macerated wine, they're all just different names for the same thing. A white wine that was made like a red wine. So instead of removing the skins straight away, winemakers who want to make an orange wine will let the skins soak for a while. This process of letting the skin soak for a while is called maceration. And the longer you leave the skins in contact with the juice, the more intense the flavor and the color of the wine will be. Those of you that know me know that two of my greatest passions in life are wine and philosophy. In particular, orange wine and stoic philosophy. So when I stumbled across a wine that combined both, I couldn't help but share it with you. Memento Mori, the inspiration behind the name of this winery, is a simple Latin phrase that reminds us of our mortality. It means, remember you will die. Remember that you are mortal. It reminds us that we shouldn't wait to do good, or to live virtuously, or to practice gratitude, or to tell someone we love them, or to share a delicious bottle of wine that you've been holding onto for years. You should do it today. Because as the great Roman emperor and stoic Marcus Aurelius once wrote in his journal, you could leave life right now. Let that determine what you do and say and think. So yes, Memento Mori reminds us that one day we will die. But perhaps more importantly, it reminds us that we are alive today and that we should cherish and appreciate everything we have right now. And what I have right now is, as Marcus Aurelius would put it, a mere bottle of grape juice and I can't wait to share it with you. So let the meditations begin. But before we get into this tasting, this video is brought to you by winemasterclass.com. If you wanna learn how to taste and analyze wine like a pro, there's a free wine tasting crash course in the description. So once you finish watching this video, click the link in the description to enroll in our free wine tasting crash course. Memento Mori wines are based in Gippsland, Victoria, and their vineyards are situated 400 meters above sea level, tucked into the steep hillsides of the Streslecki Ranges. The wine we're gonna be reviewing today is called Staring Into The Sun, and I'm hoping that the name is a description of what it feels like to look at this wine in a glass. It's a blend of Fiano, Vermentino, and Moscato Giallo grapes, and each of these grapes were fermented separately using wild yeasts, and then blended back together with no sulfites, filtering, or additions at any stage. You know, Socrates once said that wine refreshes the heart. So let's get this bad boy open and put that theory to the test. All right, so as you can see, it's a wax-topped bottle, and usually with the wax, I don't even bother taking it off. I don't think you really need to. Um, a lot of people are confused about it, but you can just plunge straight through it and pull the cork out. So let's give that a go. And if it doesn't work, then uh, I'm gonna look pretty silly, but it's just easier. There we go. So it is a bit messier, but I can't be bothered cutting the top. So in my experience, orange wines tend to come to life around 13, 14 degrees. So you don't wanna serve an orange wine too chilled because you're not giving it the chance to express all of its delicious aromas. And on that note, I would also serve it in a glass that's a little bit bigger than you normally would for a white wine. So I've got it in this one. It's not a particularly special glass, but it'll do the job for today. So 
You want to pour about 80 to 100 mils, 13 to 14 degrees Celsius into a bigger glass and you're good to go. All right, so now that the wine is in our glass, it's time to look at it. And from what I can see, first of all, it looks stunning. It looks like a beautiful cloudy apple juice or like a pear nectar or something like that. But of course, when we're analyzing the appearance, you want to do it against a white background hold the glass at a 45 degree angle and just the first thing you want to look at is the clarity is it clear is it brilliant sparkling like a diamond or is it opaque this one in particular here is a little bit cloudy and that's totally expected the wine has not been clarified or filtered or anything like that so it's exactly on point with what I was expecting the color like I said it's like a beautiful golden uh, apple cloudy apple juice something like that it's really really nice and the intensity i would say is medium intensity so we've got a cloudy medium golden wine all right so now that we've looked at it the next thing we want to do is give it a smell and before you try and guess any of the aromas or anything like that you just want to ask yourself do i want to drink this and does it smell delicious so we give it a swirl and we stick our nose in and we ask those two questions And yes, I want to drink it. And yes, it smells delicious. So I'm going to say the condition of this is good. Now, the next thing you want to look for is the intensity. How intense are the aromas? And for me, the aromas are pronounced. I mean, I could smell it as soon as I opened the bottle. I hadn't even poured it in my glass yet. And I was getting these beautiful, beautiful aromas coming out. So intensity is definitely pronounced. And the development, I would say, they're developing. The next thing we want to do is start to try and identify which specific aromas we can smell from this wine. So we give it another swirl and we want to stick our nose in and start to see what we can identify in terms of specific aromas. And for me straight away there's this beautiful citrus note. Uh, I'm thinking lemons like Sorrento lemons. Um, it's also got this mango sort of pawpaw smell. Uh, the it's like a not a green apple but a yellow apple I don't know what they're called but it's one of them so now that we've identified what we can smell in the wine we want to start to see what we can taste in it and the first thing we want to analyze when we're tasting is the sweetness can you detect any sugar and this is actually at the bottom end of the scale of sugar it's bone dry I can't detect any sugar and my mouth since it's still watering tells me that the acidity of this is a tangy lively acidity so we've got bone dry combined with tangy acidity seems super super fresh next we want to start looking at the tannins does this wine have any tannins now tannins comes from the skins of grapes so you would expect since this has been in contact with the skins during fermentation that there would be some tannins and I have to agree, I can feel them. It's like a chalky tannins, powdery tannins. I can't stop smelling it every time. Yes, yeah, super fine tannins. They don't detract from the wine at all. In fact, they give it a bit of texture and uh, it's really, really enjoyable. So next thing we wanna look at is the alcohol level. Now. This feels very low in alcohol. It's in fact 12%, I believe. Yeah, 12%. And it shows there's no noticeable burn. It's a very light body and uh, goes down a treat. So speaking of body, we wanna think about that now. And uh, like I've said in a previous video, the body consists of the sugar and alcohol in the wine. So the more sugar and alcohol a wine has, the heavier the body is or the fuller the body is and this is quite light bodied since it's absolutely bone dry and there's not much alcohol it has a light body it's not as light as the pet nat that I tried last episode but that's to be expected because this doesn't have any bubbles yeah and unlike the pet nat the flavor intensity of this is huge it matches the nose so we've got a pronounced nose and really high intensity flavor uh, so you better be ready for this when you start to drink it because it just offers so much. You know, it's got that tangy acidity, that big, deep flavor intensity. Now, in terms of balance, 
I do love the acidity, the lively tangy acidity, but I would have to say that it's a little bit unbalanced at the moment. I think this is gonna soften as it starts to warm up and breathe a little bit, so we'll come back to it in a bit. But the only thing about this wine that seems a little unbalanced to me is the acidity. It's just so, so tangy and it, it takes a little bit to get past that to start uncovering what else is in the wine. So the balance is, I would say, I'm not gonna say it's unbalanced, I'll say it's balanced, but I would prefer just slightly less acidity. Um, it's just so, it's like a zap, it's like putting a battery in your mouth. Um, I believe it will soften, but we'll see when I come back to it later. The next thing we wanna look for is the length. So how long does the flavor last once I've swallowed? So let's do that. Yeah, quite long. Um, I would say it's medium plus, medium plus length. And the next thing we want to look at is the complexity. And the complexity is a number of things. First of all, the layers of aromas that you can detect. And this thing just keeps developing. There's new aromas all the time. They're not really defined to me yet. I think they'll start to express themselves and reveal what they are in a little bit. But yeah, I would say this is quite a complex wine. Uh, yeah, it's delicious, delicious. All right, so now that we've analyzed the taste and the character of the wine, we wanna take some time to reflect. And this is something that the Stoics highly encourage. So let's do that now. Let's think about five things. The nose, the palate, the value for money, our desire to revisit this wine, and whether or not we would recommend it if someone asks for an orange wine. So for me, the nose is a four. It's very enjoyable. It's still developing. I think that this is a very young wine. It's 2020. Um, it's young in terms of vintage and it's young in terms of being opened. Um, I think you could leave this in the glass for two hours and it would develop into this beautiful peachy mango tropical deliciousness. But uh, for now, I'm giving it a four. That may change in the future. The palette is slightly, slightly unbalanced for me. It just has, the, the acidity is too racy. Um, it's enjoyable, but I'm gonna have to give it a three for this one because it's just so overpowering. It's bright, it's fresh, but the acidity is just almost at that volatile stage. So uh, I'm gonna give it a three. The value for money, it's a 40, $44 Aussie dollars. Um, so not too bad, not the cheapest, but I would say in terms of value for money, this is a four. You are getting a very high quality wine. And when I'm judging these things, it's mostly based on the quality of the wine and the potential that I can see in it. So for $44, I think you could buy a case or two and leave it for a couple years and this thing is gonna turn into an absolute bomb. Now, in terms of my desire to revisit this wine, that's gotta be a five because I wanna revisit it in an hour, in two hours, in 10 years. I mean, I think this thing is just gonna to continue to develop and I think once that acidity softens out a little bit, it's gonna be an absolute monster of a wine. I cannot wait. I mean, even smelling it now, it's starting to breathe, it's starting to relax. So I may even have to come back and change my score. Obviously after the video, I can't record forever, but man, this thing is just absolutely phenomenal. So the way it's developing, really happy with it. It's a five out of five for my desire to revisit. Now, recommendation likelihood, I would recommend this to people that I know aren't afraid of something a little bit more racy, a little bit more uh, out there, a little bit off piste So I think this is gonna be a four out of five. I do think it's a really high quality wine. It's a great example of an orange wine. You do have to be prepared for it though. It, it really reminds me of, um, there's a Sardinian producer called Detori and he does some amazing Vermentino orange wines. And I'm getting a bit of that from this one here and that's one of my favorite wines. So I got a feeling that this is gonna turn into a, a crowd favorite for me. A crowd favorite, well, I'm not a crowd. It's gonna turn into a personal favorite <laughs> for me. So what are some takeaways from this wine? Well, number one thing 
you gotta let it breathe. There's so much energy and potential in this wine. And right now, it doesn't even know how to express it. It needs to breathe. If you have a decanter, I would even decant it because decanting will help relax. It'll relax it and allow it to figure out how it can express all of the aromas and all of the flavors because right now it's 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 tense but it's it's showing lots and lots of potential so if you don't have a decanter i'll probably just open it one to two hours before you're going to drink it and that should do the job or if you don't even want to wait <clears throat> put it in the glass and just wait maybe 20 minutes half an hour something like that let it breathe let it warm up a bit and it's going to start to figure out how to express itself the other thing I would say is for pairing, this would be perfect with like sushi or raw seafood. Um, sushi, you would wanna do it with like a salmon, something that has a bit of fat, because the acidity of this and the fat of the salmon is gonna blow your mind. And then you, you could also do like a ceviche because the acidity and the saltiness of this wine is gonna go really nice with like the citrus ceviche sort of vibe. So that's gonna be an absolute no brainer. When talking on the topic of wine, Socrates once said, wine is to human as water is to plant. Too much and we can't stand up, too little and we wither away, but just the right amount and we flourish. And I think that's the perfect quote to end on. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more, then hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so we can explore the universe of wine together. Cheers. Just needs a bit of time. Get him in.